Hello fellow builders and welcome back to the bench. Mediocre Modeler here and I am very very excited for today's video. And why do you ask? Because I get to do viewer mail! Viewer mail. Now this question comes from one of my buddies, Stuart, and he writes, Hey, so I have a question and you could answer it in text or make a video on the subject. But say I want to get into making model kits, but I have no idea where to start. What's a good cheap beginner uh, paint sprayer to buy? What kind of glue or other supplies should I get? How do I, how do I choose the paint I need? Okay. So here's here's what typically happens. Typically what will happen is you will find the model kit that you want to build, <clears throat> regardless of what its skill level is. That may not necessarily be where you need to start. So you may be trying to start on a model skill level way more advanced than what you should. And that could make or break you as far as whether you continue in the hobby or not. So for your first model, I would suggest something that's very low key only maybe three to five colors just to get you in the um, process of reading the instructions and da 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 but we're gonna fore forego all that especially since you already know the model kit that you're you're wanting to do luckily for you it's the uh... the creature from the black lagoon and it's the mobius one yes yeah, Mobius models. Mobius makes great kits. They're good molds. You won't have a whole lot of flash to worry about. So, you're starting off with a, a lot, a very good kit. It's just the technical skill to complete it in the manner you want to complete it might be a little bit much. All that being said, the first thing you want, you're going to want to get started with, you're going to prime it. So, typically, you can go to the hobby shop and use, get the modeler's primer but that to me seems like a little bit of a waste of money when you can just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware or someplace like that and get Rust-Oleum Primer. I typically have flat black, flat white, and flat gray, and then I also have this red oxide. I don't use this that much. I use this specifically when the top coat's going to be like a red or a brown. Uh, it just works better, at least in my head. But uh, it just doesn't make sense to spend. For what you would spend on the, one of those little hobby cans of primer, you can get a big can like this. So uh, the one I probably use the most is the gray, the flat gray. It's, it's, it's fairly neutral. You can go pretty much any direction you want to from there. <clears throat> If you've been model building for any amount of time, you will remember these guys. Testor little square enamel uh, uh, paints. As far as finishing our model, these are good for a few things. I can't, I can't imagine completing an entire model with these. They have their place. I use these more for accents. I, I always have, this is gold and brass. I always have, for whatever reason, the gold and brass in these work perfectly. And whenever I need them, these, they, I just love them. So these always find their way into my, um, my arsenal of paints, but that's about it. The two different paints that I think work best, hands down, that no matter whether you're a beginner or expert, number one, number one choice is Tamiya. The Tamiya paints are, are just, they, they have a good thickness. They, they br you can brush them on real well. You can take these and, and thin them and run them through your airbrush. You just have to make sure you thin them properly. Just get them really thin and not, not too thin. And they, they cover well. They're, I can't say enough good things about Tamiya. They are my number one go-to whenever it comes to paint. My second go-to is 
the test doors model master they also have a good coverage of colors they have fluorescence you just I think I almost think there are more brands of the test more broader range of the test door paints that there are of the Tamiya they have an airbrush line in the model master that you can just pour it straight from the bottle into the airbrush spray your thing clean it out and put it all back on the shelf and you're done it's just a good good way to 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 paint they I, I again it's number two on my list it, it's it runs neck and neck with the Tamiya sooner or later you're gonna run into a situation where you need a color that they're not make they don't make in your favorite uh, model lines that's what happened to me when I was making the Tron kit and so I stumbled upon the wicked colored paints uh, wicked colors and this is a multi-surface airbrush color so it's got a little it's got the little mixer ball in there as well you you can pour it uh, onto a palette and paint front with a brush it goes into your airbrush once it's properly thinned it covers real well this was an accidental find I'm glad I found them another paint that I have seen in the hobby shops is this Vallejo paint I needed a I needed a color that I couldn't find anywhere else I chose this I used it in my airbrush tried to airbrush it I, I'm gonna blame this on me I did not thin it properly because it kind of clogged my airbrush up and I haven't gone back since it brushed on with a paintbrush just fine I we're gonna still have to do some investigation on this so as far as getting the paint on the model I like if you're gonna do use paint brushes I usually get paint brushes in packs like this on the cheap end I know you've seen the, the little plastic paint brushes with the, the garbage bristles don't waste your time on those they're they're not worth they're they're not worth the money it made to make those on the other end you don't want to spend twenty dollars on an air on a paintbrush and then end up because eventually what you're gonna you're gonna be painting with it and you're gonna need to change colors or you're gonna set it down and something's gonna happen it's gonna get paint dried in it or, and then you're gonna ruin a twenty dollar paintbrush you don't need to go that expensive so I usually get a variety pack that has five seven brushes in it different kinds square heads points whatever just so you have a broad range of abilities to do what you need to do with your paints so you go from that to your airbrush now this is this is my third airbrush first one was a badger the second one was a pache this is the Iwata TRN1 I love this airbrush it's so easy to use it's a gravity fed so you know gravity fed the cup is usually on the top and it goes you know gravity brings it down and it shoots out when with the airs added or a siphon feed I like the gravity feed better they tend to just work a lot better you don't tend to fight with it as much at least I fought with my gravity feed the other two ones I have were gravity feed uh, you there's a there's a single single action a dual action I think try and stay away from the dual action for right now you can look it up the difference between the two but you just want to keep it simple you just want to get used to being able to so those are most likely gonna have the trigger on the top where you just you know ch -ch -ch that like that I like the tr the, the the airbrush trigger uh, you just it feels like you have a little bit more control that's more natural to do it that way than it is to do like that the most important thing I think when it comes to airbrushes is your air source don't do anything that's gonna require you to get the little aerosol cans because one that propellant is gonna have moisture in it and which isn't gonna be good because it'll mix in with your paint the you can't regulate the the pressure consistently 
and you're going to definitely run out of whatever air you have in that little can um, before you're done with your paint project. I even tried getting a um, external tank and just filling that up with air and using that and that worked okay but your best results are going to be by getting a, one of the small air compressors so you could get a beginner's kit that has like an airbrush and the compressor you'll probably spend somewhere around $150 or so buying new I would also suggest checking Etsy or eBay because you know somebody out went out and bought a setup and maybe they either were wanting to upgrade from the current setup they have or they just didn't get into the uh, airbrush thing at all and maybe you might be able to find a deal that way so that's all getting paint onto your model what about getting paint off of your model you're gonna need some kind of a thinner the the thing I like about the Tamiya thinner is you know it's pretty much gonna be safe on any of the material that you use it on uh, as opposed to I always have acetone handy uh, I use the acetone on bigger projects but with acetone you always have to test the acetone on whatever you're working on because it will melt plastic some plastics like that uh, so but that's why this is safe sometimes you need some, something a little bit stronger or if you're repainting something and you need to strip the paint off sometimes you might need something a little bit stronger than the Tamiya a lacquer thinner but this has worked for at least 80 percent of the stuff that I've ever worked on 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 the acrylic side um, I don't think this I don't think it, it won't work on the enamel so acrylic is water-based enamel is oil-based if you didn't already know so you're also as far as painting you're going to want to mask stuff mask things off when you have two opposing colors you, you lay one color and then you lay the next so i use either the frog tape or the blue painters tape these tapes are great there's something i there's some something in the adhesive that blocks the paint from going underneath it like with just the regular old tan masking tape now that stuff has a has a place too so this is how I typically use it you take you'll take like your good tape and you'll run it along your edge of what you want either to paint or not get paint on on, on right there at the edge where your two colors are meeting and then everything else you'll just use the other uh, the tan uh, paint tape to mask everything else off that way you're not wasting your good tape so just use it on on the most important parts where you're going to be uh, meet you, meeting color to color and you want that nice sharp line and then if you just just wanting to cover to protect that's where the other tape comes in handy so we're down to we're down okay I got it in my head that well, well real model builders don't use rattle can well that's just wrong rattle can is good I mean there are times where I I use the airbrush and there are times I use rattle can the thing about the rattle can is they don't make all the colors in rattle can that they make in the bottles so that's where that's what's good about the airbrush you can mix some of your own colors or whatever um, but when you need to do something fairly big it's nice to do the rattle can but you don't have to stick to the hobby colors this is painted with a rust-oleum hammered paint it gives it a hammered look to it and that's in a, a big can like this so just don't get it in your head that you have to use the hobby paint use what's available so we've got our model basically built we got it painted now you need to seal all those colors in 
So the last step is going to be for you to to seal it in a clear coat. I typically have I, I like my favorite is semi gloss. So you have the semi gloss or you have the flat luster lusterless flat. I use the flat for like ground cover something that you know is just it's just got a flat look to it. Everything else I pretty much cover in semi gloss. It's just my world is not ultra glossy. I, 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 I just don't really care for the look of the ultra glossy coatings. It does have its place, like everything else. If you want something to look wet, there you go. Um, but for me, don't use it that much. Thing about it is, you can get your clear coats in this size can too. I've tried a couple of different kinds this works pretty well they have a flat they have also have a semi gloss and a, and a high gloss and the way I pretty much decide which way I'm going if it's a small thing I use the little can if it's a bigger thing I usually use the bigger can it's, it works in my head don't judge me so oh well I skipped over glues as far as glues are concerned you're going to want to get a good cyanoacrylate glue the test our glue from the when we were kids was was cement and it took a day to dry or so it smelled really good but it just took forever and you you just didn't feel like you were making progress not to mention you know your if your parts got off kilter or whatever when you you would glue them together and set them aside you know if you didn't set them down right they could get all warped and bent or or just not glue in the orientation you wanted them glued in that's where the CA coat comes in the stuff is typically fairly fast to begin with but you can always hit it with your Instacure some people call it a kicker you put this glue on there you, you're holding your piece together you squirt it with that and it it cures your your glue instantly which is why you call it Insta Cure. Yeah, I'm a genius. So, eventually, it's going to happen. You're going to glue something that you need to unglue. They make Uncure. I this is the only bottle I've ever owned, and I've had it for five, ten years. I just don't end up using it that often, but boy, when you need to use it, it's nice to have. It just it, it just dissol it dissolves the glue and not the part. And typically, you don't you don't have to worry about losing alignment pegs or whatever. It just gets in there and it because it's very thin. Oh, speaking of the thing on the glues, this is a middle of the road thickness of glue. It's this is uh, the Hobby Haven version of this, but there, I've seen the same bottle style, and they call it Zappa Gap. And it's a middle thickness. You can get them ultra thin, or you can get them ultra thick on the glues. This depends on what you're using it for, how much you're going to need. I, I like my glue to go on and, and flow or run at a moderate pace. The, the thin stuff, it's like splashing water on it, it'll pff, and it'll run, and it, you're sticky, and you got thumbprints everywhere. But there's a place for that as well. Uh, I have just recently picked up this Tamiya cement. Now, what I use this for, it, it's really thin. It's got a very thin little applicator brush, and what I use... Ooh, what I use that for is like on the uh, the Tamiya models. Oh, come here. So this is basically a snap together kit, but there are some pieces like these chest pieces that I want to ensure that are stuck onto his chest. So I will snap those in, and I'll use that cement, and I'll put a little uh, dab on there, and it it wicks its way through capillary action into the the amount mounting hole so the snap will hold it on but the glue will ensure that it stays on I have his cape has call, come off several times 
because it's just rests down. Of course, it won't come off now, but it usually just pops out. Yeah, see, it just pops out really easy. If I use that on there, that won't come out that easily. That's what I use it for. It's simple stuff like that. But this was designed the way the kit was designed was to just it just pops on. Ah, okay, stop it. Stop it. Just pops in the little hole. And it's supposed to stay there. Boop. All right. Okay. So paint. Da, da, da. As far as building materials, or building equipment, you're gonna need an exacto knife. It's great. You're. If I, if I have to explain why you need an exacto knife, you shouldn't be building a model. <laughs> I mean, it's just that simple. You need an X-Acto knife. You, when you get a little bit more advanced, this is an X-Acto kit, but it's 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 a saw blade. So you use this to cut uh, sheet styrene and rod and stuff like that, wood. You, But it's an X-Acto, so you can pop that blade out there, the saw blade out, and get a thicker X-Acto blade to put in there. But the majority of the time, you're going to be using this style of exacto, exacto blade. So the majority of the time, you'll be using this style of exacto blade. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. That pretty. Oh. Flush cutters or nippers, whatever you want to call them. For the longest time, I did not use flush cutters. And because you can get your stuff off the the trees very easily with the exacto knife, but it's a lot easier with the flush cutters. With the exacto, so I've I've had situations where I've cut into the piece I'm trying to cut off, and then I had to sand it down. I used for a long time. I just used uh, nail clippers with a very wide mouth, and those worked but sometimes you had a hard time getting them into the places where you need to get them the thing that I like the best about using the flush cutters is if you have a tree with a with different parts on it well here's a perfect example here's a tree that had some different parts on it and so I I was painting in tan so I've cut off this tree I've, I've cut this portion of the tree off with the parts on it with the part label tags on there and then I, all the other pieces that were the same color I took them all and painted them all all at the same time and then went to assemble the model so that's the nice thing you can you can cut cut through this the edge pieces very easily or you can cut your pieces off and it gives you a nice flush cut so you're not having to do a whole lot of sanding and 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 whatnot so a good set of nippers this this can wait you don't need it but if you run across actually I got these at like Menards these are aren't even model ones just because I know Tamiya makes some but I think those were like twenty dollars and they can get stupidly expensive but better to have something that works than nothing at all. Okay, so I think we have covered everything on his question list. We covered paint, we covered um, equipment. I think, I think that's it. If I've missed something, email me back and let me know ask the question I love answering talking to you guys so it makes me feel like I'm not talking to myself and we'll go we'll go from there we'll 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 tackle these questions together and we're gonna enjoy the hobby together one more thing as far as this hobby is concerned I say go to the place to get the things where the people know what they're doing. There's nothing wrong with going to one of the big ba big box hobby stores to get stuff, but there's nothing like going to the hobby shop where the guys there 
the, the guys there know their stuff because they're hobby builders too. You can always ask, ask them questions. There's always somebody else in there looking for something and you never know. You could help somebody else and say, oh yeah, I've used that before. It's great. Or don't waste your time. That's garbage. So go to the hobby shop. Help support your, your local hobby shops. I'm sure the guys in the store appreciate it. And I think at the end of the day, you're going to appreciate the experience in going there as well. So if there's nothing else, it's time for me to go build something. And you can go build something too. Stuart, this one was for you. This, this one, Stuart, <laughs> English is my first language. <laughs> Stuart, this one was for you. Go build something. We'll talk to you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell to be notified when I post a new video. We'll catch you next time. Here come the pew pews. Pew 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 pew.